Hi, I'm Zoltan Lehotsky, and I will tell you how we turn software into hardware here at Lombik Technologies with our R&D project called Hestlier. Now, we at Lombik are a software services company, mostly doing web development and providing related software development services and training. But we also have an R&D project called Hestlier. Now, Hestlier is a tool for software developers that automatically turns their computer programs into computer chips, we could say. Now, to be a bit more specific, we use so-called FPGAs for that. FPGAs, or Field Programmable Gate Arrays, are special computer chips that can be reconfigured to behave like any other logic hardware. So basically, you can tell these chips to, for example, any other computer chip, any other um, processor, you name it. Now, so we, we could say that rather we turn computer programs with Hestlier into FPGA logic. Now, not just any computer programs, but more specifically programs written for Microsoft's .NET platform. So what we do now actually is that we take .NET programs or part of .NET programs and turn them into FPGA logic. Now, one of the advantages of .NET is that it can uh, support a lot of programming languages. So to write software for the .NET platform, you can use C Sharp, even functional languages like F Sharp, or C++ that everybody has heard about, or Python, even scripting languages like PHP or JavaScript. And Hesler will be able to process that. All right, but why on earth we do this? Why do we accelerate .NET software with FPGAs? Well, um, we have two reasons. With FPGAs for selected algorithms, the performance can be increased a lot by multiple orders of magnitude. And since we are essentially swapping out parts of a computer program with a specialized hardware, it can be also very power efficient. So the power consumption can be uh, decreased a lot. Now, if you think about uh, applications that use probably tens of thousands of computers, um, reducing the power consumption and increasing the performance is really a big tail. So let's see how Hestlier actually works. What we have here is a Hestlier compatible algorithm. As you can see, I've opened Visual Studio. So uh, this is the IDE that most of .NET developers use. And this is a C-sharp program. As mentioned, Hestlier is compatible with a variety of programming languages that um, all will be compiled into .NET assemblies. But for the sake of this example, we will take a look at a C Sharp application. This is a simple console application we have here in this Hestlier compatible solution. And in here, we have this par parallel algorithm class. This is not something actually useful. This is just an example that showcases which kind of algorithms are best suited to be accelerated with FPGAs and um, using Hestlier for that. In this parallel algorithm, we have a single run method. And inside that single run method, the bulk of the algorithm, uh, if we can call it that, is just this loop here. This loop will go to this big number and just sum um, the index to a result or subtract the index from this result. So it's either um, adding or subtracting a number. And it will do this until this big number is reached. Now, this little piece of logic that we see here will be actually run in a multi-threaded manner. As you can see here, we are starting a new task. A task is part of .NET's TPL framework the task parallel library, and it's an abstraction above multi-threading. But long story short, we will, in the end, start multiple threads and run this piece of logic on multiple threads. Actually, we will have 200 threads if the architecture allows it. And when all of these threads are finished, we will just simply, again, sum all of these partial results and the output will be the sum of these partial res results. 
everything that you can see here is standard.net. Of course, what we have here with the for loop, with the if, is just standard C sharp. Uh, TPL is part of .NET. The only Hessler specific thing we have here is this simple memory object that is used for data exchange. So uh, in this, this simple memory object is basically an abstraction of a byte uh, containing memory or a memory that, uh, that contains uh, cells of bytes. And uh, these bytes build up a 32-bit um, uh, 32 bit memory that we can access here. And this is used to push data to the FPGA board and to send data back from the FPGA board to the host PC because the FPGA is on an accelerator board uh, connected to a standard PC. Um, below this uh, class, we just have some extensions to make the usage of this parallel algorithms class a bit simpler. And as you can see, this will just receive an integer and return an integer. And inside that we have this Hessler specific deal with the simple memory object. Let's see how we actually run this. This is the main class of the console application that we have here. And it showcases everything and even more than just, just necessary than uh, that's just necessary to run Hessler. As you can see, first we create a Hessler shell, then we have some bit of configuration. Uh, we also have an event handler that we hook into to, to show when, uh, when an execution finished on the FPGA hardware. Then we have some further, some further configuration. We tell Hessler that it should just process this parallel algorithm class because otherwise it would also uh, take a look at this program class itself as well. But of course we don't want to transform this into FPG implemented hardware. And secondly, we also tell Hessler to use a degree of parallelism for that parallel implementation of what we have configured in that constant, which again will be 200. So um, this will be um, more or less 200 threads uh, when we run it on the PC. But on the FPGA, it will be actually turned into parallel hardware. So on the FPGA, we will have like 200 little cores, 200 little processors that do exactly what we need. So it will be a true parallel architecture that's a specialized hardware only dealing what we need. So very efficient and can be a lot faster as well and very low power. So the FPGA board that we have here and which I've shown you a picture of just uses about two watts of power. So two watts versus the tens or hundreds of watts of CPUs or GPUs. Next, um, we generate the hardware representation with Hessler, which basically just um, receives the configura configuration object we created before. And it also needs the list of assemblies that we want to transform. So we just pass the assembly of this current console application to it. So it will process everything that it will, it will find in this assembly. Of course, filtered on this namespace uh, that we have configured here. And next, um, we actually run the application, which is here. As you can see, first we generate a proxy object, which uh, will just wrap this uh, standard parallel algorithm object, and it will hijack all the method calls and dynamically push them to the FPGA. So when we actually call this run method on the object, this won't run on the PC. It looks like a normal method call, but it isn't it will be actually run on the FPGA. The data will be pushed to the FPGA. So this number will be sent to the FPGA. The FPGA with its embedded configured hardware that we just created will run the algorithm and send the result back what we can use here as a normal .NET variable. So I have the FPGA configured already. 
let's see what happens if I start the application. Now, after a bit of build, there will be a communication handshaking between the FPGA and the PC, and then the algorithm will be run on the FPGA. As we can see, this already uh, happened, and we have run the algorithm three times on the FPGA. It took roughly 300 seconds on the FPGA all the times. Now, remember that we have specialized hardware, so there is no operating system, no task manager, no task set scheduling. There is nothing else running on that hardware, just our algorithm. So that means that if the runtime of an algorithm uh, doesn't depend on the input value, then it will always be uh, uh, as fast as before. So no, no matter how many times you run this algorithm, it will take the same time with the same input, because there is nothing else interfering with that. Altogether with the communication round trip, it took uh, just below 400 milliseconds uh, to run this algorithm. Now this 1780 70, 80 milliseconds that are um, added to the actual hardware runtime is the ser serial communication round trip. So what we have here is just a very simple but slow serial connection. It, this is very easy to use and it was um, fairly simple to implement, but of course it's not the best one. We do have Ethernet communication as well, which is much faster. Now, as an example, we, we have also run the algorithm on the CPU, as you can see here, just in a standard way, and it ran a bit um, slower. Well, almost actually 10 times slower, so it was roughly 300 milliseconds versus to and um, uh, 2.6 seconds. Of course, this algorithm is very well suited for Hessler. It's well, it can be well parallelized and it only deals with integers. So it's excellent to be accelerated with FPGAs. But here you have a very simple way to do that with Hessler. Nothing to learn about FPGAs, just a bit uh, that you have to learn about Hessler to make your code Hessler compatible and just a bit of configuration you need to actually run your algorithm via Hessler. So thanks you for listening. Uh, I hope Hessler sounds as exciting to you as exciting it is for us to develop it. Now if you would like to check out some more details about Hessler, go to hessler.com or just go to GitHub and among the Lombic repositories you will see the demo project I have shown you here, and you can check out the code for yourself. Now, while you won't be able to run it, because you also need a Hasslier framework and the runtime for that, you will be able to see that um, um, this is how a Hasslier compatible project should look like. Thank you, bye bye.